and welcome to Culture here on I-24 News. I'm Ubed Groper. Thank you for joining me. Today on our program, we discuss current alternative music in the Arab world. We visit a small village in Iraq, enter its ancient synagogue and meet the guardian of the tomb. And finally, some theater revivals from Broadway and the West End. Now we're joined by uh, radio journalist and blogger Yvonne Saba, who is the host of a show called The Bridge on IDC Radio. Yvonne is an expert on what's happening in the contemporary Arab music scene, and she's here to introduce us to some of the new alternative voices from the Middle East. Hello, Yvonne. Thanks for coming Hi. in. Thank you for having me. So I, I want to first uh, hear a little bit about yourself, about the show that you're hosting, what, what you try to do on it. So basically the show that I have is, uh, has been running for about two and a half years and the idea behind it is to introduce people to a whole new scene of music that they're not very much familiar with. Uh, some people are somewhat scared when they hear music in, or the language in Arabic for it. There's the whole stigma about it. Yeah. And so I try to break that with uh, some new and interesting music that most people would never expect to come from Palestine, Iraq, all of these, uh, or, the, or Jordan or Egypt, like all these different places where there is a thriving music scene over there there with you know genres you wouldn't even believe yeah us and come we out should there. say the majority of, of your listeners are not Arab uh, uh, not Arab not don't speak the language um, how are they accepting it a lot of people find it refreshing. Uh, I've had people uh, send me emails or come up to me personally and just say, wow, you've really exposed me to something I never thought existed or I'm going to start listening to a lot more. And mostly it's positive. And I really, really, I didn't expect it. I thought I was just for a while, you know how it is, just talking to yourself. But then you find that you have listeners in Egypt and you have listeners all over the Middle East. And it's not only internationals yeah. listening, but it's also people from the Arab countries and Israel so it's really it's really interesting and right uh, now you could it's it called the bridge yeah um, <laughs> I can guess why but but yeah. you know, I'd uh, like to hear it from you basically it's kind of corny but the idea is to connect people through music because it's one of the only languages that people understand without having to know the language or actually kind of dissect every little lyric yeah. uh, it's a way to connect people through music and culture yeah and do you uh, deal with any political issues on the show, or you uh, try to avoid that? I try to aside? avoid it as much as I can, but as we know, uh, it's everything. It's, is. it's almost <laughs> it. You know, you can't deny it. It's, it's there. So when it do, does come up, I try to be as objective as I possibly can. Bring as uh, a, I would guess around. that a lot of the lyrics, a lot of the, yeah. the artists mm -hmm. deal with political yeah, issues. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the artists are very politically driven. They have their opinions. But there is a very fine line where it becomes their opinion and they're not politicians. They're not trying to kind of, you know, say this and this is right or wrong. They have their opinion and they want to voice it. And it's something that they've never had the chance to do before. Yeah. All right, so uh, uh, we want to try to uh, hear as much music mm -hmm. as we can, so uh, yeah, let's get going. What what did you bring us? So we have one of the first bands up is 47 Soul. They are one of the latest additions to the music scene. Uh, they had a very successful uh, crowdfunding campaign, which is big in the Arab world. They've raised over $30,000 uh, to jumpstart the whole album, and they've been touring ever since. Uh, the let's listen, yeah, shall not? Let's, go. let's hear. <laughs> Very cool. Mm -hmm. Really not the traditional sound that, that we're used to. Now it's also there. There are mix. There's a, a Palestinian guy, a Jordanian guy, an American guy, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a whole. The really great thing about this music scene is that there's a huge a lot of collaboration between bands, and so these guys individually are very big on their own, but they've sort of come together and wanted to create something new and different. And you know, one of them is Palestinian. Walas Bet is from Haifa. It's from here. Mm -hmm. um, we have Jordanian cool. such. 47 Souls, uh, a super group you know. yeah, of indeed. Uh, independent super group, Arab. Indeed, yeah. All right, let's uh, move on to... 
Uh, so we've got Dam. These guys have been pretty well established. Yes, very very well established. Um, they've just released their latest music video called "Who You Are." Let's have Let's a look. Let's hear it. <laughs> بضل في من نست عايش على طبيخ الماما مش عنيف مش هسوي عينيها زرق بس كعريس بفضل عينيها زرق مش محلك تا أقرر مش محلك بس هجرب مش محلك لو محلك كن بحرر well, I could pick up the word feminist. Yes, it's uh, it's very very feminist. Uh, this band, this song has been very important because it's the first time they've had a female member in their group. Maisa Do has always been part of the group unofficially, but with this song, she finally sort of made her debut in the band. And with this very important song, which is dealing with uh, equality, gender equality for women, you can see in the video that the gender um, yeah, the gender roles are there. sort of split. The video was directed by uh, Oscar nominee Skandar Kupti wow. and uh, it's a very it's made a lot of impact socially and uh, you can see it on headlines almost everywhere. And it sounds great which yes, is awesome. So. Yes it's very important. Awesome. All right let's keep going who we got now? So we've got Joanne Safadi. This guy has made a lot of news in the last few weeks uh, because of his latest music video. In uh, Hebrew? In Hebrew yes and um, I, I can't ex you have All to right, just let's see hear it, it. You first then it. you'll tell us yes. All right, so obviously, as uh, it's hard to be an Arab. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah, that's well, it's it's hard anyway, you know. Yeah, and now now we have a song about it. Now people know exactly why he had these built-up feelings after uh, the last war on Gaza, and he wanted to voice his opinion. Yeah, and he and he did so, and he did so in Hebrew, also talking to the people that mm -hmm. that, that directly. Yeah, the exactly. Passage. So it's a, a bold move, mm -hmm. one that definitely uh, uh, gained him some recognition. Yvonne, uh, super interesting, great music. Where can we find some more? Well, you can find it on IndiePush.com. It's a really great platform for independent artists where you can share their music and gain points and, of course, buy the music as well. So it's really great. Yvonne, thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Moving on now, the village of El Kosh is uh, located a few dozen kilometers from Mosul, one of the jihadist strongholds in Iraq. It's an unremarkable village, or would be except that it houses an abandoned synagogue guarded by a local resident. I-24 News correspondent Mael Benoliel was there, brought us this report. El Kosh, a village in northern Iraq, a Kurdish village threatened by the Islamic State organization, like so many others in this area. Mosul, the terrorist group's main stronghold, is only a few kilometers away. A millennium-old village now inhabited by Christian Kurds. 15,000 of El Kosh's inhabitants are fervent Christians. In every street, a church or a monastery. And yet, in the middle of this small village, a synagogue, and not just any synagogue. Come on. This man is the tomb's keeper. When the state of Israel was created in 1948 and the Jews were forced to flee the area, Nazir Salam Sajjeh and his family were chosen by the only Jewish family living in the village to guard the place before they too had to leave the area. The Jews left the area in 1948. A Jewish family used to live in this house. Moshe, the father, his wife, Saadia, and their children, Maurice, Naji, Malka, and Sarah. My father knew them well. It is me who takes care of the tomb. I take care of this blanket, I wash it, and then dry it before putting it back on the tomb, just like this. Nazir, his wife, and their children live only a few meters away. Before him, his father was in charge of guarding the place. After him, one of his children will take the helm. We do it for the love of God. It is a blessing, a divine reward. Nahum is the seventh of the 12 biblical prophets, 
an enigmatic figure said to have written part of the Old Testament. Jews from all around the world would come to prayer. They would celebrate the holidays, dance, eat. They would rent the same houses every year for the holidays, every year. Kurdish Jews like this man who preferred to remain anonymous. Just like him, there is still a tiny minority of Jews who decided to stay after 1948. From time to time, Nazir gets a visit from this Israeli passport holder. And according to the Kurdish tradition, he opens the doors of the synagogue to this visitor and to anyone else who would want to visit it. Muslims come here, Kurds too, no matter the religion, whether they are Jewish or not. Anyone can come on a pilgrimage to the tomb and speak from the heart. When it comes to the IS presence in the area, this Kurdish man, holder of an Israeli passport, is rather optimistic. IS hasn't managed to get here and will never succeed, never. There is nothing they can do against the Kurds. Yet only a few months ago, fighters from the Islamic State almost took control of the village. Then, although a great number of the village's inhabitants decided to flee, Nazir remained and still remains to guard the tomb. Somebody has to. In a moment, we'll hear about some interesting theater revivals. But first, here's our cultural recommendation for today. From Latin America to Asia and from Europe to the Middle East, this explosive exhibition connects the dots between art produced around the world during the 1960s and 70s, showing how different cultures and countries responded to the pop art movement. Politics, the body, domestic revolution, consumption, public protest, across a diversity of platforms from canvas to even pinball machines. The exhibition will reveal how pop was never just a celebration of Western consumer culture, but was often a subversive international language of protest that remains relevant today. Tate Modern is ready to tell a global story of pop art. And now Lauren Izo is already in the studio. Hi, Lauren. Hello. Thank you for having me again. Uh, always a pleasure. <laughs> Plus, I don't have a choice. But uh, <laughs> we're talking theater, of course, right? Of course. And you're bringing some things from the past. So there's nothing more exciting when a beloved show or musical is brought back. Sound of music. Not that. Not today, anyways. Okay. So, <laughs> so which one? What are we talking about? So um, right now is the 40th anniversary of the Rocky Horror Picture Show, the movie that is based on Rocky Horror Show, which was created in 1973 by Richard O'Brien. Mm -hmm. It is a cult classic. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've heard of it I've and heard all of the music. It. Yeah. It's uh, quite a psychedelic show with yeah. lots of colors. Are you and a fan? I am a huge fan. Really? I okay. can't lie. I've been to a midnight showing of this on Halloween. Really? Okay. <laughs> All right. So yeah, because I spent like five years living a block from, from the Village East uh, uh, Cinema where they show it every Friday, I think, at, at midnight. So you've also and been. And I never went. You never went? Never Not went. once? No. I don't so, know. I don't connect to it. Anyways, the exciting thing now is that Richard O'Brien, who wrote the show, is actually uh, appearing in the show that's on a limited time run on the West End. So let's have a... A peek at this clip from Richard O'Brien's 20 year, he hasn't been in the show in 20 years, wow. so let's take a let's, look at his. Richard O'Brien, as I said, he hasn't been in the show in 20 years. He's playing the narrator for a week-long run before the show goes on tour. So uh, it's really cool. I mean, I wish I could go see it. I am a fan of Richard O'Brien for the because of the very crystal talented. maze, if you remember that. The crystal maze. Yeah. All right. Check. Look it up. All right. Later. Fair enough. All right. All right. Moving on. Yes. One of my favorites, Spring Awakening. 
It debuted on Broadway in 2006. Uh, it won a bunch of Tony Awards, and now it's being remounted on Broadway, and they're using American Sign Language as part of the choreography. Wow, so that's it's something special. Very interesting. Let's have a look at what exactly this looks like on a stage. So a sign language musical. Yeah, it's a first for Broadway, for sure. All right. Interesting times. Thank you so much. Thank Lauren. you. That's uh, it from us for today. I hope you enjoyed watching our show. Please visit our website, i24news.tv, and join us again tomorrow.